Welcome, guys. Welcome to All Star Volunteer Training. So, uh, Tatiana, my daughter, and myself, we're gonna bring to you a couple points that we wanna talk about. We wanna share some things uh, as a as a leadership in abundant life. We wanna bring to you some core values of our church, of our family here. And another thing that, uh, as a church, as a family here, we are cultivating the culture of honor. We are cultivating the culture of healthy communication. And some things that w were never talked to us or never uh, taught at school or some homes have different cultures, different way of communicating. So that's why we, we decide so that we all as a family be in the same page so that we can bring some points to you, share with you, and, um, and we will do this journey together, yeah? Do you want to say hi? <laughs> so we're excited to share, like we mentioned, about communication with you guys and about our core values as a church and um, just giving you tools to set you guys up for success on what it looks like to communicate well and um, and if you already communicate well then just to take it to another, another level, level. <laughs> here you go <laughs> it was not a script <laughs> so as um, some of you know um, we cultivating in LCC uh, we cultivating the culture of honor and you would ask what it looks like in, in different families culture of honor looks different but in our family this is what it looks like we believe in uh, honoring each other with our words, with our action, with our time. Um, we believe in a culture of timing, you know, and with our answering emails or text messages, uh, trying to do like when you get the email or text message, uh, just to get on and say, I got it or I heard, yes or no, to honor people who are maybe planning something or scheduling something to honor that people will know that you value them, that you hurt and you're on it or you can't do that. That would be very important. And another thing is what I want to share with you that character matter. My character, your character matters. So we uh, encourage you to um, just stay connected with the Holy Spirit and he will lead you and guide you and show you what area we all need to grow because we are growing from glory to glory. And three H's I call it be uh, to honor others to stay humble and to stay hungry so when you um what it looks like to be humble if you make a mistake apologize that's okay because family we believe in lcc we believe in uh process and the process always you're never gonna grow without making mistakes have you ever heard this phrase that um I know that Tatiana went to the school, and in the school, uh, one of the principles was about making mistakes. Can you share it really quick, really brief? Um, yes. Yeah, so they said that um, you can't graduate until you failed at least once, because if you haven't failed, that means you haven't truly tried. Well, not yeah. truly tried, but you you will always mess up. But it means that you're learning something new. So that's what it means. It gives you freedom to be you and to try and to learn and make mistakes. But if you made mistakes. Go, go back and see why, what, and talk to God about this and move forward. And clean up your mess. It's needed to be, oh, believe me, we all once in a while clean up our messes. So, and uh, integrity. What integrity looks like in your life? To uh, live your life like for audience of one, to watch over your heart, and to connect with God. To, and in our Abundant Life Community Church, one of the core values, we value the presence of God worship and um worship it's not only on sunday morning when you come to church worship it's a lifestyle it's a lifestyle in everyday life when you cultivating that time with the lord listening to his presence worshiping him and it can be anywhere and everywhere it can be driving in the car and walking with your kids so and um and another thing that um culture of honor manifesting in another way it's celebrating each other celebrating promoting each other not promoting yourself but promoting each other so i um i think you got the memo by now so and we're going to be moving into we're so thankful for you and we thank you for joining the team we thank you for giving your time your energy your talents bring them all to the to the ball bring them all to the family and i believe that god will blow with the spirit uh, of life over them and together we can make a difference in our area in this state in this country so and we're gonna move on uh, with some uh, basic steps or basic foundational communicational tools that will help uh, you and help me before we're sharing with you to move on and to uh, stay connected with your uh, with first of all in your family 
with your loved one and anywhere you go. So I'm going to give mic to Tanya. That's the time, <laughs> Tatiana. Yeah, so thank you again for investing your time and energy and love and even sweat sometimes into this church. We really appreciate you guys so much. You are so amazing and you are so loved and we're so excited to um, have you part of our community and to do life with you and throw events with you too. <laughs> um, so yeah, so like Mom mentioned, we're going to be focusing on communication and giving you tools. So let's look at this first. So what is communication? Communication um, goes two ways, right? So it's a message that I'm trying to send and the under and also understanding the message that is trying to be sent. So communication is sending a message and understanding the message that the person in turn is sending to you. Um, and we're going to look at it in a different way. So what are some of the foundational principles of communications? Um, and Honestly, it, it's not just from a faith-based perspective, but from any perspective. And the first step is this fruit of self-control. Realizing that I have control over the way that I respond and the way that I react to what someone has said. And there's these two great quotes by Danny Silk. And he says, I have the freedom to tell myself what to do and to make myself do it. And the second one is, I don't control others, but on a good day, I can control myself and manage myself in the presence of others. So right here, you're taking ownership of your actions, your words, and your response to people, and you're not um, you're not going around like a victim and saying that everything's happening to you or that they made you feel this way. Because in reality, you are a powerful person who is in charge of their own emotions and their actions. And um, it also reminds me of Havila Cunnington uses this great example when she's talking about emotions, and she says that emotions are like kids that you can't let them drive the car, but you can't. You also can't stick them in the trunk, as much as you may love to do that. Why? Because um, <laughs> it's easier it. that way. No. <laughs> she did put me in the trunk anyways, but I asked for it. It was fun and then scary. But anyways, so you gotta let them ride in the back seat, right? So with emotions, we gotta um, validate them. We gotta see them, acknowledge them, because emotions are indicators of what's going on inside of us. But we can choose, are we going to let those emotions drive us crazy? Are we going to push those emotions down until they explode? Or are we going to let them ride in the back seat? Are we going to see them, acknowledge them, talk to them, see what's going on, and then partner with Holy Spirit to respond rather than to react? Good. This is the point. Respond rather than react. So, and sometimes people have this phrase when they're saying, but she push or he push my buttons. Then I, w I have a great news for you that we have so many different ministries here to help you to clean up your buttons. One of them would be Freedom Prayer or Sosa Ministry that when you get rid of all the buttons, nobody can push anything. So that's when you come alongside other people and they, you can hear whatever they're saying without reacting. Yes, that's really good. That's a good point. Um, and the next core value is love. That all of the skills or tools we're going to give to you, they best function when love is in play. Um, and we need to go into conversations, whether it be difficult, easy, fun ones, loving the person. We may not know the person super well, or we may not even like the person, but we got to operate out of the spirit of love, which is Jesus Christ. We got to walk with him and make sure that we are representing him well in the way that we communicate. And also, kind of going back and highlighting this point that um, we should be self-aware and proactive to exhibit love and to choose to respond rather than react. That a lot of, like there are some people out there who are emotionally aware, spiritually aware, but they don't do much with it. And so you're kind of stuck with that. You know what's wrong, but you don't want to make any progress. You don't want to be proactive in changing it. So you're stuck there. You're stuck in that gunk. And so it's hard to allow love to come in or allow love to drive your conversation and your actions when you're just stuck in your gunk and stuck in your emotional and spiritual weird gunk. And so that's why I um, just want to highlight the point that it's good to be aware of what's going on, but what are you doing to actually help you grow and to um, help you progress in your spiritual and emotional walk with God. And another point is... Um, like coming into a conflict that we can see a conflict or an argument as like, oh boy, like here you come. Like this is gonna suck. This is gonna be horrible. 
like our relationship's gonna fall apart I don't want to have this talk you can go into it being like this person's going down like I'm gonna kill this conversation I have the best argument the best supporting points all this stuff or you can see a conflict as an invitation to create a closer connection with the person and you might be like what on earth like conflict never happens like that for me I know for us as a family and even in our relationship before learning these tools whenever it was a conflict it ended in raised voices slam doors and just not talking to each other for the rest of the day if not maybe next few days because that's it like she hates me that's it that's the only reason that's why she's saying felt. this the only thing she's doing this. <laughs> yeah but that's what i felt it wasn't the truth and so we're going to give you some great tools on to how um how to come into a conflict and actually leave the conversation being aware of what was actually going on and communicating your needs your feelings and your emotions to actually um, allow you to grow from it rather than to just degrade the relationship so on that note i want to add about conflict a couple years ago when i started to when i uh, i uh, was going through some training and i heard that the the teacher was teaching about the conflict and when i saw that um how to talk in a conflict and how to see the conflict so which was a game changer for me because right now you know those who are married married couple and with a spouse and wife relationship or with your children or with your boss anytime you go in a conflict you think okay that's it the game over no she, he or she don't like me anymore we don't have uh, anything in common uh, we're done we probably need to divorce or you can look in the conflict and said that's an invitation it's mean that we grow we grow already in some level of relationship but there is something else something deeper that we can go but uh, and if you go into the conflict and hearing with your intentions to understand to hear okay what he or she is trying to tell me why i don't hear or see the same way and after this course we will give you a couple tools how you can see this how you can hear it so that you would be empowered when you see the face the conflict you would not feel like okay that's it i need to run from this conversation but you will like you know what god let me hear with your lenses what what that person trying to say that we can come out of this uh argument or conflict empowered instead of defeated yeah and that is a really great point um and just want to leave you with this thing um this phrase it's that when we come into um these conversations or any conversation that we want to walk in peace we want to partner with the spirit of wisdom and we want to speak in love we want all of our actions and all of our words to portray who jesus is and who he is to us and that he is the person of love and that he speaks with wisdom, therefore we can do the same. And yeah. so the next part of this is uh, we want to be intentional to connect first and then to give content. So what does this look like? Um, I'll give you an example of what not to do. So <laughs> um, a few years ago, um, I have this more of an acquaintance, you know, just on the occasional um, holidays, you see your talk or whatever, you know. So um, I received a message from this person that I didn't know super well, and um, it said, um, I don't even think I was greeted. It was just saying, there's this event. We need people to do this. It's at this time. Let me know if you can help. That's it. Not a hi, how are you? Nothing like that. And as soon as I got that message, I felt, I was like, oh, like that's a bit rude, you know? I felt used. I didn't feel loved. I didn't feel seen. I didn't feel cared about. And what that shows there is um, like a lot of times people are having conversations in their head and when they go to t send a message, they're already talking, you know, they're already saying all the things and they type out the second half of the conversation, but they miss the completely like the first part. And so what we want to highlight here is let's put that other conversation in text or in email because we want to show people that we value them and that we love them. And I know that it wasn't her intention to come across as rude or anything, but I, um, that's what I felt. That's how I received it. And so what we want to be intentional with doing is whenever we're sending a message or um, a text message, an email, whatever it may be to, hey, let's greet the person. How are they doing? Showing that you, you actually care about them and you love them as a person. That even if they say no to what you want them to do, you're not going to be mad or you're not going to be upset. Um, and so greet them, ask them how they are, and then ask the question um, to show that they're loved and valued. So, yeah, that's a very good point because um, as a culture of honor, 
you honor person. And even if you're getting messages like this, don't forget who you are and you speak as a kingdom person. You answer with, hi, how are you doing? Nice to hear from you and give your answer. And I would encourage you to give people benefits over the doubts. You know, always seek high in them, even if they are failing. You know, um, we have two rules here in, a, in, our, in our offices, in the Abundant Life Community Church. We don't communicate any, any things that need to be communicated through the text messages. What I mean by that, so if I, need, if I have some, not a conflict, but if I have some question or something that I got the text message and it came across not the root or it came across something different, I would text back and say, hey, can we meet? I need to talk or give me a call. I want to I hear your voice. I want to see. Because sometimes we're reading text messages or we're reading emails through our lenses. And I'm not saying if, um, if you don't send, hi, how are you? There is no way how I can read it different way that how you send it. <laughs> but I'm just saying that try to avoid any communication that you can avoid uh, through the text messages if, uh, and do them any misunderstanding or anything else. Do them face to face, do them eyes to eyes so that you can hear a person's uh, voice. You can see uh, uh, and hear their heart, um, heart intentions, not just reading through like, oh, what she meant by this. Okay, so that's a couple of things that... We uh, encourage people not to get into uh, agreement, disagreement, arguing through the emails or text messages. Yeah, and um, that's good. We want to represent Jesus in our communication style. So when we're sending a text or an email thing, are we representing him well in the way that we're communicating, verbally and in written form? Um, and so there's this other phrase, which I'm sure we've all heard. It's not what you said, but it's the way that you said it. And often it's both. And so... Um, what this means is that a lot of times, like I mentioned, we're having like dialogue in our head, but the way that we say it can come across rude or offensive or mean or whatever, but that's totally not what you actually meant to say. And even with different cultures, it's oh, yeah. the communication's so different. You go to all these different countries and uh, something here might be so offen so rude if you do it in, let's say, China. And if you don't do something in Japan, it would be like, where, like, are you even cultured? Like, what did your mom teach you how to close the door? You know, so like just things like that, um, that we need to be aware that we can't read people's mind. And instead, we can easily ask what they mean. Um, and also is to choose connection over offense, that when we're not understanding it, um, that instead of choosing offense and choosing to believe that they meant it with um, bad intentions, that we can actually ask them and have um, the benefit of a doubt. And what I like about uh, about Life Community Church is that we, uh, I love that we have different cultures. They all represent God from such a different uh, angle and such a different taste to it. And it's beautiful. It's wonderful. I love connecting with the different uh, nationalities. But in the same time, that's when the, the real challenge comes because whatever it's um, normal in our culture is not normal in the United States. And get, guess how I know it? Yeah, I, I've been there. You know? So let's say in our culture where I grew up, and especially in our family, in my big family, I'm one of the six siblings and we always had full house of people. We would communicate. We would have a lot of different communication around the table. And we would talk over each other. We would uh, interact. And everybody hear each other and answering. I can be part of five different conversations, answer everybody. Which when my husband joined our family, he was sitting and watching. And he was amazed because he said, I can see that they're answering each other. But I don't know who is. I thought that nobody listening each other. So we had this gift. He didn't. If he needed to talk, he was doing like this. Like, can I say something? Because... In his culture, in his home, they wait for other for somebody to say it and others step in and talk. So here, this is why it's important for us to, I learned here that, okay, that's rude to interrupt other people. If you talk to me and you're interrupting me, I'm not going to, if we have, especially if we have conversation and I share something and you're sharing back, back and forth, I would not feel dishonored. But if we have, if you ask me something and I start to share and you cut me off and do it a couple times, I'm like, okay, did they really want to hear what I'm saying or not? So all these little tricks, it would be important for us to be aware. And if you don't understand something, just ask, hey, is that something that you're trying to say? Or is that something that I'm just hearing, but I need to know your heart, your culture, what, is, what it's all about? 
Yeah, so in summation, it's keep an open mind and um, have a, give people the benefit of a doubt and ask when not sure. So I'm just going to sum up the main points of this section, right? So what we were talking about is um, communication is a two-way street. It's the message you're sending and understanding the message the other person is saying back to you. Um, the second point is we have the spirit of self-control. Therefore, we can control our emotions and our reactions and responses. The third point is everything should be driven with love. Are we communicating out of love? Are we operating out of love? And the last point is we should choose to connect first rather than um, before giving content. And now the last, last point, because I missed this one, is um, to not assume what yes. people are thinking or their intention or their motive, but to ask. Simple as that. Don't assume so, that you know somebody's intention. Oh, I know what you meant. Uh, how do you know? Somebody told me once, I know what you meant. I saw your face and I knew exactly. And they told me what I was thinking. And I'm like, actually, I wasn't thinking that. So, yeah, don't assume. Just ask. We want to bless you with that. And guess what? The part number two is coming. And you really want to listen to that. If you, you, I believe that you receive so much from this, this one, the next one, even better. See you.